Hello and welcome back to A Splash of Paint. Now it gives me great pleasure to welcome into the studio SAA professional watercolour artist and tutor Louise Bogard as she uses her lively and loose style to capture the dramatic landscape of Dartmoor in part one of today's Try Your Hand At project. Thanks Matthew. Today I'm going to paint a scene from Dartmoor. It's an area that I absolutely love. It's looking from Hound Tor across to Hay Tor in the far distance. There's lots of things going on. There's some lovely rocks, some texture, and lovely distance. I won't put so many busy clouds in. I want to keep it a little bit calmer. So, here we go. I'm going to be using a big flat brush to put on some clean water to start with into the sky. I want to do um, a really atmospheric sky, but I want a few areas that are a little bit calmer and cooler, if you like, uh, in the... Um, the mayhem of the, of the moorland sky. I've got a mix of indigo, opera pink, or opera rose, and yellow ochre to create the sky colour. Uh, just an absolute hint of the yellow ochre. The reason I've used those three colours is it's going to give me a very atmospheric uh, sky, which um, you often get on Dartmoor. It's usually sort of like, run for the, for the car, it's going to pour down. So on we go with a really big sweep of this lovely colour. What will happen is it will dribble, as you can see, and it's quite strong, but once it hits these wetted areas, we're going to get some softer areas, which, as I say, is going to have a, a sort of calming effect. And the pink that I've put into the blue will split as it hits the water, and you'll end up with a really pretty glow in the sky, which is very effective, um, as I say, creating a, an interesting mood. Just one little extra tip, as I'm coming down the painting on the sky, I'm going to pick up a little bit of extra pink and pop that into the far distance. As we're coming further down towards the, the land, fill in those little gaps. Don't be worried about covering every single inch, although we don't have any spaceships, so we'll probably get rid of those. Touch of extra pigment. My husband's ever so good at telling me you've got spaceships again, they're in the sky, so they've got to go. And you can see that by putting that little bit of water on to start with, you've got some quite nice areas that are beginning to develop. Even this area, I don't want to lose all of that, that light. I've actually gone right over the, the distance, because the distance is going to be mauve anyway, a real sort of purple, cool colour, and that just adds an extra bit of interest. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of that sky colour, and for the sake of harmony within the painting, it's nice to actually echo colours as you're going. So I'm going to pop a little bit down here. It's always a bit mad when you slop on these lovely big swathes of colour, but it's such fun. And I'm awfully sorry about the carpet, but, you know, I'm going to add to it. A <laughs> bit of extra colour and texture. You should see my studio. <laughs> Rinsing the brush. And I'm just going to do a little bit of fine-tuning with some tissue. I put sellotape sticky tape around my board to keep a really white area, which is brilliant for your framer, because once you've started getting your work framed, you want to continue to do so, and that allows your framer an area to work in when they're actually putting the frames on. I need to now, having cleaned my brush, pick up some green gold, and I'm going to place some of this into the foreground, so there's some brighter colours here, and as you can see, I've actually forgotten the photograph now. Now I'm going to just do what I want to do, which will make it really exciting. So big swathes of this superb green gold into the foreground, allowing it to, where it's dribbling. Lots of people panic about that, and I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. I think it's really exciting. So let's get some more of that going. And I'm going to now move my board. I know I've got it on a, an easel, but if you just tip your board, don't ever be afraid of doing whatever you want to do to make it work for you. You can then get the pigment going in the places that you want it to go. And just encourage some of this green gold to move over there. A little bit of a hard line there. I'm not a fan of hard lines, so I like to get rid of those if I can. And you can see how it's starting to dribble even over here. Well, fine, we'll just pick that up and get rid of it. 
and where the colours are merging down here, you're getting a bit of an interesting effect. What I'm going to do now is use a nice flat brush, small one, and I've mixed up some French ultramarine and some burnt sienna, and it's very, very thick. And the reason it's so thick is what I want to do is suggest a few of the rocks. And I just should just mention, I have put a little bit of masking fluid to preserve some white areas around the rocks to suggest grasses. I've also used a little bit of a, a wax candle just clear, I can't use your red ones for Christmas, to give some texture in the uh, foreground. Also, I don't know if you can see this, but right by the, the tour, hay tour, there's a tiny little path. It is slightly discernible in the photograph, but it's just to echo that in a, in a slight manner, not too vigorous. I'm going to use this flat brush. These flat brushes are fantastic for doing rocks because you, you're literally just splodging it on and it's, you've, there you are, you've got a rock. I've put two there. I've drawn two, but I'm going to have three, so I'll pop another one there. See, good old rule, isn't it? Always have uneven numbers. See, it's something to do with floristry. Right, some big, bold marks here for these rocks. I'm going to take some of the pigment off because I'd like the top to be lighter. I have put a few marks of the wax candle to preserve the, the, the white paper. And you can start to see that texture even this dribble, I don't mind. It's absolutely fine. We'll go with it. And this one, pop this one in. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the burnt sienna so that that rock has got a slightly different tone to it. You don't want them all just completely dark. So this one's going to have a little bit more brown to it. I'm coming over here. Because these rocks are closer to you, they also need to be quite warm. So I'm going to put some of that same colour, the brown. It's a mixture, say, of the French ultramarine and burnt sienna, but this is much more brown. I'm going to pick this rock up now. Not literally. <laughs> and again, the masking or the wax candle has done its job in preserving the, the paper and giving nice texture. Again, I've only drawn one or two, so I'm putting a few more in. There's loads of rocks all over the place in Hator, so you've got to have some more. Clean that brush. And very quickly, with a sword liner, I'm going to suggest some grasses. Now, they're not in my photograph, but I love using a sword liner, and I really enjoy painting some grasses. It adds a little bit more interest to the foreground. So around these rocks, I'm going to start putting the odd grass and who says we can't have purple grasses they look nice they're exciting and even though the foreground is quite damp we can still with very thick paint suggest some of these grasses and one final area for this stage before I need to, need to leave it to dry, is putting in some of the distance. The reason I've done this is normally I'd have gone into this area a bit sooner, but I want this area to dry before I go back in with some more pigment. So I just now need to add the same colour I've used, the purpley colour, it's a bit darker. It's just, again, it's um, indigo, yellow ochre and opera rose, but I want this to be a little bit stronger. Now this is going to be the distant hills. If I'd have painted it bright green, like the foreground, that would look a bit odd. So we need to have it a cool colour so that it recedes. Big sweeps in my sable brush. I've carefully drawn Hator, so I need to make sure I carefully paint Hator so it looks like it. When you're actually painting something that you know, is iconic to an area, this is on Dartmoor, um, you have to really try and make it look like the reality, if you like. And just into that, very quickly, some green gold for good measure. And we'll allow that to settle and dry before I can go on any further. 
So I'll see you soon. Stunning techniques there, Louise. Visually vibrant and atmospheric. And we look forward to seeing part two later on in today's programme. Well, folks, time for a quick break now, but join us in part three when we shine the introducing spotlight on the talent of Heidi Jo Summers. And I'll be popping back to the easel to share some more watercolour techniques. I'll see you after the break. <laughs> 